Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to Fat History. It's where we tell cool stories about fat people throughout history that you may not have heard before. This week's episode is going to be on Eugenia Martinez Vallejo. And if you find yourself wondering who is that, don't worry, I'm not surprised. So a couple of years ago, I came across this painting here. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this is so precious. I love this so much. Years later, I came across this picture again and I remember thinking, I wonder what the story behind this is. And so I looked into it and apparently there is a very interesting story. And if you find yourself asking, who is that? Uh, that does not surprise me. Um, it was incredibly difficult to find information on her. There's only two other videos on YouTube in English about her, and they're both pretty much saying the same thing. It's like a word for word reading of this article. And so finding information on her was a little bit difficult. Um, also because you can find more information about the art that was created about her than about her story. And I hate that, so I'm gonna tell you the story now. Just a little warning, it is a little bit of a sad one, so, you know, just a heads up. Out of the videos and the information that I've seen about her, it's all like very dehumanizing. Um, it makes me sad. I wanna retell the story in a way that gives her the dignity that she deserves. So with that being said, let's get started. Eugenia Martinez Vallejo was born in a small village in Spain. The interesting thing about her birth is that she was born in a Catholic church during mass. So to many people, that was a sign that she would live an extraordinary life. They were right, but maybe not for like reasons they thought. So this was 1674. Whenever Eugenia was a child, she gained weight a lot quicker than other children. And so even in a time when food was like harder to come by, they still criticized her for her weight. It said that she was the first well-documented case of Cushing syndrome, which is basically just a hormone disorder, which caused her to be hungry more often and to be bigger than the other children. And because she was bigger than the other children, they put her on special diets, which <laughs> in a time when food was like literally hard to come by, they still put her on a diet and it's like, okay at six years old. <laughs> okay. She was just a cute fat kid and people like to talk about it. So much so that the Spanish King Charles II decided that he wanted to look at the fat child. And so <laughs> he decided that he wanted to look at the fat child. <laughs> and so he sent word and was like, bring me that fat child. I want to look at her. And so her parents obviously were like, okay, cool. So they sent her to the palace where they immediately gave her a fancy dress and she was presented to the king. And he was like, I like this fat child. In fact, I'm not giving her back. She's gonna live here now. And so her parents weren't really in a position to say no. So they were like, okay, I, I guess so. And so at six years old, she went to go live at the Spanish court. And here's where it gets sad. She was immediately given the nickname, The Monster. And while a lot of people like to remember her as being well-loved, taken care of, and, and that she you know, had a wonderful life, they leave out the fact that she was treated like absolute garbage. Like back then for entertainment, the king would just have like a group of people that he would just keep around for everyone to laugh at. And so she was basically just a court jester for them. It was said that women really loved her because they liked to get their portraits painted next to her so that it made them look even smaller next to her. It sounds like junior high. <laughs> if you look up information on her, just a heads up, a full warning, uh, the way that they talk about her is so sad and just completely without any dignity whatsoever. What she's most known for is two paintings and later a statue made of her. The name of the first one is translated to The Monster in Clothes. The name of the second one is translated to The Monster Nude. Um, it's really sad, just a full warning. Um, when you look at the portraits, you can tell that she's like really not happy to be there. She looks really sad. Knowing that it took like eight hours for them to paint a portrait like that, yeah. She was uncomfortable and definitely not happy about being there. 
The portrait the monster clothed was later turned into a statue. A fun fact about the statue is that there's a little mouse at her feet. It's because whenever the artist was working on the statue, there was a little mouse that would hang out in the studio with him. She lived till 24 and I looked so hard for so long to try to figure out where she was buried or any information about her life, her death, anything. There is no information. And I think that that's really sad because all the information that you find, it tries to make it seem like she had a good life, you know, like she was well taken care of. She had fancy clothes and was well fed. And they kind of like remember around the part that she was like used for entertainment. And now she's remembered for the portraits and the statue, where it's, it's like she's still entertainment for people. And so it's heartbreaking and she deserves for her story to be told. If anyone has more information or knows of any like books where she's mentioned or anything like that, definitely leave it in the comments. I would love to know more. So while the story today is short, I do feel like her message is really strong. I feel like a lot of us can relate with the feeling of people wanting to keep us around for entertainment. So let me know, have you heard this story before or is this new to you? And that's gonna do it for us today, guys. I hope you like this story. If you like content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and TikTok as well, I'm a lot more active on there. So yeah, <laughs> thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed it. And yeah, if there's, if there's anyone that you want to see me talk about or whose story you feel like needs to be heard, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. So.